Hello, here is a question number one. It reads, uh, a lamina made of an insulating material carrying some amount of charge and this is placed in XY plane of the coordinate system as shown in this figure. So this is Y coordinate, this is X axis and this is Z axis. So this plane is XY plane and this lamina that is two dimensional object which is charged is placed over here. Further, it reads uh, electrostatic potential at ozone due to the charges on the lamina is V0. So here is the charge distribution, aerial charge distribution and this entire charge, let's say total charge is Q, it will have a potential at origin as V0. So that's another information we have. Furthermore, now the lamina is made to rotate with a constant x, uh, angular velocity omega about z axis. So you rotate everything maybe like this. So this lamina rotates about z axis. We need to find the magnetic field at the origin created by moving charges of the lamina. So we can think of equivalent picture this. So let's say uh, on this lamina, we consider any dq charge which is at the position vector r in xy plane. Now this charge when it is rotated, the uh, lamina is rotated about z axis with omega let's say like this. So this charge is going to move in a circle in xy plane with the center at origin. So r will be the radius. Now this moving charge will be behaving like current. Hence there will be differential magnetic field at the origin because of this charge dq. If corresponding current is di then we know the magnetic field at the center of circular loop is mu naught the current divided by two times radius now this di can be written as dq divided by the time period of rotation that is 2 pi by omega which will simplify to omega mu naught dq upon 4 pi r now just like this dq there are going to be several many dqs and all will be forming the closed circular loop and uh, all will have the magnetic field in the direction of omega itself. So all magnetic fields will be in the same direction. Hence, total magnitude of magnetic field can be written as integration of dv. Now, when we integrate this thing, so you'll find omega no, omega and mu naught will come outside and it will be integration dq upon 4 pi r. Now, this integration is uh, a bit challenging because the distribution of charge on the lamina is not known to us and this r is going to be notoriously varying depending upon the shape of this this lamina however there's one more information about the volt, uh, potential at the origin so if we need to calculate the potential at the origin because of this charge distribution again we need to take the charge element and at a distance r which is going to be uh, give the potential at this point as k dq upon r and if we integrate this scalar quantity, so we'll get the total potential as V0 as integration K dQ upon R. K is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. So basically the integration dQ upon 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to V0. And this, this integration has to be has been performed over the entire charge distribution. Now if we look this, this is very similar to this one. So what we can do, we can multiply epsilon naught upside and down, upside and downside. So this integration will become exactly the same. Uh, moreover, they will have the same unit of uh, uh, this limits of integration. This integration has to be performed for the entire charge distribution. This has been performed for the entire charge distribution. Hence, we can borrow this value as V naught over here. So final answer will become B is equal to mu naught omega epsilon naught V naught. And um, this is the magnitude of the resultant field at the origin direction is going to be in the direction of omega so we can write vectorially as well b vector is going to be these numbers and we can put the direction of omega so that will become the perfect answer for this um, question which asks for magnetic field at the same at uh, this origin point okay that's how it's done thank you